All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing today is we are going to use the grid to transfer a small portion of the picture to the grid we have drawn. Now, the picture and your paper might be entirely two different sizes. Uh, the idea here is that these are all squared off sections, perfect squares, and so is the grid that you've drawn. So if we translate this to the idea of like graph paper or graphing, all we're trying to do right now is we are trying to establish where things go. All right, so we're going to try to translate what we see here to here. Like I mentioned yesterday, uh, this is a technique that's been around since the Renaissance and even before that. Artists like Michelangelo would draw grids on their actual sketchbooks and then transfer those grids to a wall or a ceiling to draw. I'm going to focus on one box at a time. And inside this box, you may find that part of the picture is either really, really sharp like you have a nice clean edge or kind of blurry. But regardless, you are looking for edges. If I start in this top edge, I'm looking at this space compared to the rest of this space. This little red line segment here versus how big it is there. And I'm making an educated guess. My guess may not be exactly right, but what I want to think is I want to think that the size relationship between this space and this space well, to me, is like almost like one third of that box. So I'm going to start with that top corner right here. And if you follow my mouse, I'm just starting to draw this edge right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to work that little bit of a shape down. I'm getting to this part right over here where the, the shape sort of turns and changes. I'm going to look to see where that is in the box and for me it's sort of halfway through this box so if I again up here try to figure out halfway that'll kind of help me figure that out from here I have the rest of this this is obviously the edges of an eyeglass if you can't make it out I'm gonna try to figure out where that's gonna go alright to kind of figure that out I might want to start down here and just take a look at how much space there is from here to here versus there to there and I'm going to go down and again try to make my approximation. Again, you might not get those approximates exactly correct, but it's important that you see that one side is either bigger than the other, it's near the middle, or it's all the way to one edge. From there, what I'll do is I'll start sort of working out for this bump over here. And again, I'm going to look at this bump and how far does it come into this box? Where does that line up? To me, it's somewhere over here. So that's going to help me think about how big it is. As long as you are using some sort of reference in your grid to try to figure it out, your goal is to try to make this edge, this shape, to be as similar to the photograph as possible. If you are close, and then the other person in class who's doing the piece next to you is close, well, they should ultimately end up fitting like puzzle pieces. I'm going to start focusing on this box now. I've got a lot of empty space, but down here I have this little tiny, tiny bit of whatever it is, ear, skin, whatever. This is helpful to me because it's really close to the corner. So down here I'm going to kind of approximate again that little tiny shape. As I go up, I'm going to see that I have sort of the edge of the cheek and the edge of the glasses. I've already established the edge of the glasses to be over here somewhere. So this kind of, to me, goes sort of diagonally down. Uh, that would get me to somewhere around here. Now, I don't have to worry so much right this second about where the edge of the glass is. I just kind of want to rough out where the space is going to be. I also want to look at this bottom corner and see this little triangle. Now, if I figure that little triangle out, that would probably tell me that I need to move my cheek out a little bit. So use the edges, use the little grid, use the little negative spaces that are created to try to help you locate where everything is supposed to go. Again, this is going to take a lot of looking and double checking on your part. I'm going to look back over here. I'm going to look at the top part of this. I'm going to look at my shape. I feel like something doesn't look right over here. If I compare this space to my space, my space looks a little bit too small. So I'm going to see that maybe this 
was supposed to go down a little bit further. So this is a place to, for you to like double check yourself and sort of see that you have things in the right place. Again, it's not going to go down in one shot perfectly. Your job is to check and double check what you're drawing. All right, the next thing I've got going on is I've got sort of like the edge of the glasses, all right? And that is going to go to approximately the area that I marked off. And then down over here, I've got another little part of it that wedges out. So I'm going to try to lay those things out. And I'm going to look at this shape, and I'm going to try to make sure it looks like this shape. And what it tells me here is that I feel like the rim of my glasses is probably going to stick out just a little bit further than I originally thought. On this side, what I want to do is I want to try to look at this box, and now I want to look at this long, big curve. I really want to see from this point to this point versus here. This is longer than that. It's close to the middle, but this is longer than that. So when I come down over here, I'm going to make sure that I do the same. I make sure that this is longer than that um, and close to the middle, and that'll help me with my curve. So I have a start over there. Now for the top box, very top box over here, the edge of the glasses just happens to be right on the edge of the top. So that's going to help me. What I'm looking to draw right now, I'm looking to draw this little tiny wedge, this little triangle of space. By drawing that, that kind of helps me figure out where everything's going to go, and now I can kind of sort of play connect the dots. By having that, what the next step is for me to do is really sort of look at what I have so far and try to make a couple little changes or adjustments sort of to see that well you know what I think I need to kind of adjust the size of this just a little bit you know it, it's hard to know if it's exactly right until you have stuff on the actual paper so you're always double checking yourself you're always trying to get it as close as possible now we have the inside part of the eye a part of it at least. I'm looking for edges. I'm going to try not to make up stuff that I don't see. What I see here is I see the bottom edge of the white of the eye. And in that case, again, I'm going to kind of look to sort of figure out where approximately that should start. The next thing I want to look to is see how far, how far this side of the eye comes in. And if I look at that, I'm going to look down here, I'm going to see once again, it's close to the middle, but this chunk is bigger than that chunk. So if I go straight down here, I'm going to find myself somewhere like here in my picture. So that's going to help me understand how far out that eye should come. And that's an important thing to make sure, especially if you have an area with an edge like that. From there, I can kind of sort of guesstimate my way towards the rest of this side of the eye. And then again, I want to kind of figure out how much space should there be for the dark part of the eye. I see between this and this, this is kind of almost a 50-50 split for me. So when I go over here, I'm going to go again looking to try to get a sort of 50-50 split. With that, I've drawn most of the basic parts of this drawing. I can double check what I'm doing. I definitely do because I want to feel pretty good about where that goes. Because this part, even though it doesn't take super long, you want to be accurate because the rest of everything you're doing is really based off of what you do right here. So if you want to make some changes or adjustments, if you want to kind of clean it up and fix it, now's the time to do it. But this is ultimately what you're going for. Now you can add a few more little details in pencil and anywhere else that you see like an edge, you can kind of put down information for yourself. But at this point, I would say I am done with this, this part of the drawing. Before I, I move on to anything else, what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, obviously clean it up like I'm doing it now and then I'm gonna boom take a picture of it you know and submit it I want you guys to show me what you have so that I could double check it you know real quick and let you know if it's good or not when you take the picture make sure you take the picture from directly overhead your picture should look like a square if you're taking it from an angle like this it doesn't help me because it's hard for me to understand if you did the proportions correctly. So when you do take a picture of it, take a picture of it from up top. We're going to finish with this. This is what we're focusing on today. When we're done with this part, 
then tomorrow I will demo how to shade. I know some of you are, are ready to go on the shading and some of you know how to do this and, and you want to get started right away. I just ask you to please be a little patient with me. I'd like you guys to all kind of get to the same spot. And more importantly, I really like this to turn out pretty good, so I want to be able to check what you're doing. So you're going to do this part and then you're going to submit it. Um,